No, we didn't punk out and we didn't get thrown out of the kitchen. But there are certain things that you don't want to do in your kitchen. Cleaning parts and grinding and doing stuff like that. Do it outside, you know, find another place. Well, our plan is to do most of that stuff in our backyard. But it's full on polar vortex out there today. So we decided to retreat to the comfort of our heated shop space over here and uh, talk about cylinder heads because this is the next step in the link. So before I go any further, let's, let me just say this. If the engine that you're working on is common, right? Uh, you know, not an oddity, not a rarity, not a super high performance thing, but a common engine, you're gonna be miles ahead just going through an auto parts store and picking up a set of reconditioned cylinder heads. The reason for that is that the, doing head work is different than doing block work. Most block work, aside from like boring and whatnot, decking can be accomplished, you know, at home. But with cylinder heads, we're talking about guides and seats and everything else, um, they require a lot of very specialized equipment. You know, at the very least, if you're going to do your heads yourself, you're going to have to buy or rent a valve spring compressor. Um, then of course, you know, springs, seals, valves that you may have to replace. By the time you're done nickel and diming it, you're better off probably just getting a set of recon heads. Like these, for example, are available right now. I checked this morning. They're available right now for delivery on Monday for $410 a set. These are just regular 360 heads, which is unimportant to the context of this particular series. But if I was only going to be putting this together as, you know, just, just a driver, right? Just a cruiser, a driver, whatever, that's what I would do. I would just take these heads, box them up as cores, and then get myself another set. And if you're doing high performance work, aluminum heads have come to the point where they're really affordable. The amount of time and effort that you put into set into a set, prepping a set of race heads or high performance heads, um, fifteen hundred bucks for a set of ready to go out of the box aluminum heads to go fast, it's not a bad deal, you know? But that again is out of the context of this particular thing. And since neither you nor I are on the Edelbrock gravy train and you know fifteen hundred bucks you don't just trip over that in the street. Let's focus on what we can do with the, the regular production castings. So these are the ones that we're going to use. And uh we have to do a lot of evaluation on these before we even take them apart. So let's talk about seats first. One of the things that people are always concerned about is sunk valve seats, and this has to do with pre-1971, 1972 engines. They introduced unleaded gas in 1975, so the automakers around 1971 started putting, started putting hardened seats, and it, it, it applies to the exhaust side. The exhaust side is the one you've got to worry about. They started putting hardened seats in their heads around 1970 and 1971. If you're dealing with anything post that, you've already got hardened seats. If you've got anything pre that, they're hit and miss. Now, I've come across many engines, 1960s engines, uh, that have broken down and had absolutely no appreciable seat deterioration. Now, the seat, here, use this one real quick. The seat is this area right here. Okay, and what happens is the lead in gasoline, what it used to do is it would, it would act as a, as, a, as a thermal barrier and keep the valve from etching metal away from the seat. So when they hardened the seat, that etching stopped. When the valve sinks, it's literally taking that seat and dropping it lower and lower and lower. How do you tell at a glance if you have sunken valves without actually pulling the head apart? Oh, real easy. Lay a straight edge across the valves. And if you see one that's sticking up much higher than the others, especially on the exhaust side, you can pretty much guarantee that it's sunk. Or you can just flip it over and look at the seat itself. If you can, if you can catch your nail on the valve like these, you can clearly see you know, the, the, the outside of the valve is, is up over the combustion chamber you're good to go. Two things that are very important to know about this. The sunk seat will kill flow. It hurts low lift flow. So from a performance aspect, that's bad. And also, if you're dealing with an engine that doesn't have adjustable rockers, 
like a fixed rocker shift engine like a Mopar or really any of them that you don't get a chance to adjust rockers, that sunk seat puts the valve up higher and it preloads the lifter even more. So it'll pump up the lifter or float the valve that much earlier. So sunken seats is something you definitely want to avoid. But like I said, I have seen many 1960s engines that don't have hardened seats that don't have any wear issues at all. It's hit and miss, it's manufacturer to manufacturer, it's head to head. Um, it, a lot of it just has to do with the metallurgy of the cylinder head. And then of course I've seen engines that supposedly have hardened seats, you know, from the 70s and the 80s that have destroyed valve seats, that the valve is sunk all the way in. So it's hit and miss, you have to inspect your own. So, um, before you take them apart, you want to know if it needs to be surfaced. Same deal as we did with the, with the block, right? Emery cloth, the lubricant, okay? And just run it, run it. Stay away, do it here. And just run it across and look for any low spots. This one actually, I should have cleaned this head a little bit more. See, there's still some gasket material here. Before you do this, make sure all of the gasket material is off of there. But it's just for demonstration purposes. And also, there's a couple of videos of guys that resurface their cylinder heads at home using a block. Uh, there's a few different ways you can do it. Some people will take, take an abrasive like an emery cloth, attach it to a table, a flat surface, and rub the head back and forth. And believe it or not, that's pretty much what machine shops do. They'll have a surfacing conveyor belt that has a abrasive on it, and they'll just drop the cylinder head on it for a couple of seconds, pick it up, and they've got a nice clean surface. But like I said, you want to make sure that you, you're, you're dealing with a head that isn't warped. The easiest way to do that is clean it like that, and then lay your straight edge across and go from there. Then you want to see what the overall condition of the chambers are. So, and this is crucial if you're just planning on taking the cylinder heads off, giving them a quick bath, and then throwing them back on. This is something you really need to know. This is like totally old school here. But stick a spark plug in the chamber, fill the chamber with gasoline. You know, level it out as best you can. There you go. Level it out as best you can, submerge both of the valves, and then watch and see if it leaks down. So this one here is holding its liquid. This cylinder for the most part was sealing. That was a good one. So we could sit and watch this all day. But generally, you fill all of the chambers, let it sit, and if you do have leakage, you'll see it running out of the port, or it'll just appear, disappear out of, the ch out of the chamber. Another thing you come across, oh, I gotta show you something on this too. On this, on this head, oh, I know this. So, hey, come here, look at this. Look at this stem right here. You see the way that stem is mushroomed over? Look at this one. They're the same diameter stems, but this valve here, is mushroomed over, it's flattened down. And here you can actually see, see it catches right there. So this thing is mushroomed out. If you're gonna disassemble these heads, make sure that after you pop that valve spring off, you dress this area down before you try to drive the valve through the guide because you'll end up killing the guide just with that. So that's another thing you wanna check. You wanna make sure that all of your valves are the same height and you wanna watch for any type of mushrooming or, or flattening. So let's let's feel like no this one here also. For some reason the two end cylinders on this engine, they did the same thing, but here you see? Look at the way the catch is there. See that? So another thing you want to be aware of. Alright, valve guides. I don't even know if the valve guides are good. Well, yeah, after you've taken the motor apart, if they look like this one right here, you know that they're no good. Look at the way that thing is split. That's just a completely destroyed guide. 
That's from, that thing must have been so sloppy and the valve just banging around for how many years and it just split all the way around there. Okay, and here's, here's one that isn't so bad. So here's your quick and dirty check of the valve guide. Take a valve. Stick it in there. It's dry. Don't put any lubricant on it. Now look, watch. Put your finger over the guide like this and pull on the valve. You should feel suction. When you push the valve in, right, you should feel it push on your finger. When you pull the valve out, you should feel it pull. There should be a bit of a vacuum there. And in this case, there is no vacuum at all. Okay, this thing is just, this is a dead guide. And here I can take this valve and just, yeah, that's the valve full in on the guide. So, no bueno, no bueno. And this is why I'm saying, if you're going to do this stuff at home, you're really best off, you know, like it's a basic engine, you're really best off just swapping it out for a set of reconditioned cylinder heads. You'd be way ahead. One other thing I want to talk about. Um, so we're building for high performance on this thing. And one of the limiting factors in camshaft height or, or camshaft uh, uh, lift that you have to deal with when building an engine is how much lift will the head take? And the amount of lift that the head takes is dictated by the height of the guide. So now on these, on these small block Mopar castings, I know that the limiting factor here is approximately 540 thousandths of an inch. That's what they give you. So if, let's say you want to run a 600 lift cam on this thing, or uh, you're already at like, you know, you've got, got, got 500 plus lift cam and you want to go to a longer ratio rocker for a little bit more lift, this is one of your considerations. You need to, if, again, you're building for high performance and your goal is to put a, a larger cam in there than it was intended, um, you definitely want to dress these down. You can cut, you can cut the guide down, you use a grinder, and you can cut it down, you know, a hundred thousandths, two hundred thousandths of an inch. You're not going to hurt it at all. The seal will still fit over it and do its job properly. But that's, that's one of the things you need to be taken into consideration if you're building a high performance motor. Um, what else did I want to talk about here? I think I covered pretty much all of that, right? Yeah. Um, so my next step is to strip these things down and get the valves out of them. Order valves, because I know I've, I've got at least two of them here that are mushroom. I'm probably going to find more. Uh, the seats look good, and I'm going to do some very extensive porting on these heads. Uh, but again, see, that's out of the context of the rebuild series. I will show you the basics. If you know, you're doing it at home, you just want to clean it up a little bit, do a little gasket matching, right? I'll show you how to do all of that. But uh, yeah, like I said, my next step with these is get them apart, get them cleaned up really good, uh, get the surfaces taken care of. I got a broken stud over here that I'm going to have to deal with. Right? That's, that's always fun, especially when they're broken off under the, under the surface. But we've got to take care of that. And, uh, and that's it. Then we go back to the house. The next, the next thing we'll be doing is back at the house. So that's it for now. I'll see you tomorrow.